Welcome to City Life TV, I'm Danae Jones and today I'm joined by the conveyancing team at WGC Lawyers and we're talking about buying a house and what you need to look at. Welcome to the show ladies. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. And so Georgia, what is it that we need to look at in a contract before we purchase a house? First thing that we would absolutely recommend is before you sign a contract, make sure you engage a legal professional, whether that's a conveyancer or a solicitor, to have a read through that contract before you sign the dotted line. Because it's a legally enforceable document, you really want to make sure you understand what it is you're agreeing to before you agree to it. And a legal professional can definitely help you identify any potential risks and help you avoid any headaches as well down, down the track. So Sarah, what do we need to look at with the conditions in the contract? There are two standard conditions in an REIQ contract. Those are finance and building and pest. It's important to notify your conveyancer or solicitor if any of these are relevant to you. If you're getting a loan to purchase a property, it is important to allow enough time under the finance condition to ensure that your bank will be ready for settlement. Generally, this is 14 or 21 days. Ensuring that the contract is subject to a building and pest condition is something that we suggest to all our clients, particularly in Cairns tropical climate. The building and pest condition gives you the opportunity to have a building and pest inspector attend to the property to ensure that there are no underlying issues with the property that yourself or the seller may not even be aware of. Whether that be water damage causing mold or structural damage caused by termites, obtaining an inspection really allows you to get an inside and out on what you're purchasing. And so what about special conditions? So special conditions are clauses added to a standard contract that are specific to the transaction and are used to address the unique circumstances about a certain property. For a buyer, special conditions can be very important as they can help protect the buyer's interests by outlining specific conditions that must be met before the settlement date takes place. If you have any concerns, your conveyancer or solicitor can help draft special conditions to address your worries. One very common special condition that we see all the time is having a contract subject to the seller completing a professional clean of the property prior to the settlement date and at their expense. Uh, what many buyers may not realise is that the seller is not actually required to have the property professionally cleaned before the settlement date or even left in a moderately clean state at settlement. This can catch out many unexpecting buyers who are looking to move into the property after settlement has taken effect. So including a special condition like this one can help alleviate a lot of worry and stress prior to settlement. So what is a cooling off period and how does it work? Yeah, absolutely. So there's a cooling off period in most REIQ contracts, which actually allows a buyer to terminate the agreement within a certain period of time. So normally in Queensland for REIQ contracts, when you're purchasing a residential property only, you have five business days from the contract date to decide whether or not you'd like to terminate. Now, this could be great if you're a buyer who's just executed an agreement and perhaps within this time frame, something's happened for whatever reason, you need to reassess your position and you can no longer go through with it. So all you would need to do is contact your solicitor. Your solicitor will write to the seller's representative, let them know you'd like to terminate the agreement. Keeping in mind though, this isn't a totally 100% get out of jail free card. If the seller chooses to do, they may elect to retain the equivalent of 0.25% of the deposit that you've already paid. So what is the importance of paying the deposit on time? Of course. So first and foremost, it's important to understand that the deposit is a significant and binding payment made to secure the purchase of a property. Under the REIQ contract, the deposit is typically paid at the time of exchange, which is when the contract is executed and becomes legally binding. If you are unable to pay the deposit by this date, you risk losing the contract due to breach of contract and potentially face legal action. So we definitely recommend to all of our clients that prior to entering into a contract that you ensure that you have all of the deposit monies ready to go and ready to be paid so you don't face this unfortunate situation. However, if you do happen to enter into an executed contract and are unable to pay the deposit by its due date, we recommend seeking legal advice with regards to your next steps. So what is the difference between a chattel and a fixture and why are these important? So often the one section that the parties overlook 
will be the included chattels and the excluded fixtures. It is important to not only know the differences between these two, but also ensure that they're listed accurately in the contract, preferably before you sign it. So fixtures, on the other hand, are items that are permanently attached to the property or fixed to the property. These are things that can't be so easily removed, such as air conditioners, perhaps you might have solar panels on the roof, even down to the flowers and shrubs planted in the soil. So the contract actually places certain obligations on the parties in this respect. So specifically, anything that isn't listed as an included chattel in the contract technically has to be removed from the property as at the settlement date. So ensuring the parties have a very clear and thorough understanding of what is and what isn't included in the sale goes a long way as far as avoiding any unnecessary disputes down the track. So Sarah, what are the new smoke alarm requirements under the REIQ contract? As per the latest edition of the REIQ contract, the seller now has the responsibility to ensure that all smoke alarms in the property are compliant with the Fire and Emergency Services Act. So this means installing compliant smoke alarms that are photoelectric, interconnected and installed in every bedroom and hallway of a property. If the seller does not install compliant smoke alarms in the property prior to the settlement date, the buyer is entitled to retain 0.15% of the purchase price to update and install these smoke alarms after settlement has taken place. So we definitely recommend to all of our buyer clients to have a good test of these smoke alarms at their pre-settlement inspection to make sure that they're all working fine. So Sarah, are there any additional fees associated with purchasing a property? Yes, so it's important to keep in mind that in addition to the purchase price, you must pay lodgement fees and transfer duty fees. So lodgement fees are the fees associated with registering the title in your name after settlement of the property and transfer duty is a government tax that's levied on all property purchases. It is important to remember that these fees are paid on top of the purchase price and need to be taken into consideration if paying cash for the property or even if obtaining a loan. Most banks won't cover the costs of these additional fees, so it's important when speaking with your solicitor or conveyancer that they obtain an estimate as to what these costs will be so you can ensure that you can cover the entire cost of the property purchase. So Georgia, are there any transfer duty concessions available? Yeah, definitely. There are actually several that a uh, buyer purchasing a residential property may be entitled to claim. So these include the first home concession, first home vacant land concession and just your general home concession as well. So there are certain obligations attached to each of these concessions. For example, if you're a first home buyer purchasing property, you've never owned property before, whether that's in Australia or anywhere else in the world, you may be eligible if you're purchasing a property that is valued at less than $550,000 and you're intending on moving into that property as your home within one year of the settlement date. So the second concession, similar to the first one, first home vacant land. You may be able to claim this if you're a first home buyer, never owned property before, purchasing a block of land with the intention of building a brand new home on it within two years of the settlement date. The third concession is a general concession, uh, allows buyers who have owned property before to purchase another home as long as they use it as their principal place of residence. So the certain obligations I mentioned before might include that if you claim one of these concessions, you cannot dispose of the property, which means rent or sell it within 12 months of the settlement date. What if you're not ready to settle by the settlement date? So the REIQ residential contract has clause 6.2, which actually allows you to extend the settlement date by five business days. This provides for some flexibility of the settlement date without the worry of being penalised for needing an extension. However, this is something to keep in mind as a buyer because this may affect the settlement date, meaning you'll need to keep this in mind when arranging moving trucks and collecting keys from the agent. That was really helpful information. Thanks for joining us on the show, ladies. Thank you. Thank Thank you. And thanks for joining us on City Life TV. If you'd like some more information about this topic and many others, head to citylifemedia.com.au or reach out to one of the experienced team at WGC Lawyers.